Welcome to another edition of Cancer Facts with Dr. B. Today's question is, what are all of my treatment options for low-risk prostate cancer? Most shared decision-making discussions begin with the role of active surveillance or observation for low-risk patients. However, there are seven treatment options, including stereotactic ablative body radiotherapy, a radical prostatectomy, external beam radiation therapy using between 20 and 45 treatments, proton therapy and carbon ion therapy also using between 35 and 45 treatments, permanent interstitial brachytherapy, and high-dose rate brachytherapy, and focal therapy. Here's a more detailed list of the options, including eight different standard linear accelerator radiation machines, Accuray CyberKnife S7 dedicated robotic stereotactic radiotherapy system, proton and carbon ion machines, radiation machines that use real-time imaging with an MRI, three different ways to perform a radical prostatectomy, and eight different forms of focal therapy. So let us consider these options with our second case. Case number two, a 55-year-old male with a PSA of four nanograms per milliliter, a great group of one in four of 12 cores, all from the right side, and a smooth prostate on exam. He has good urinary scores and is able to have an erection without a problem. We will use the acronym Care About Me. He has stage 1A based on the proposed star cap score system. He has low risk disease based on the NCCN guidelines, and he has a CAPRA score of 1. He would be in area 2 of this schematic. The overall survival and prostate cancer specific survival will not be different between the treatment options in this area. No one paper is able to compare all nine options. The only difference will be the cancer control rates, the type and severity of the side effects, the retreatment rates, and the overall cost. Here are the cancer control rates uh, or the PSA control at five to 10 years. What stands out is the 98% cancer control rate with CyberKnife and brachytherapy. Surgery has been the standard of care since Dr. Patrick Walsh from Johns Hopkins improved the nerve-sparing radical prostatectomy in 1982. Only two major changes have happened since Dr. Walsh improved the radical prostatectomy. The da Vinci robot can make recovery easy, easier, but it is not clear it improves potency rates, incontinence rates, or cancer control rates. We have a lot more data to tell us when to use 36 to 39 radiation treatments after surgery, or what's called MAX-RT, RP. In most large randomized analysis, surgery consistently provided better prostate cancer-specific survival and overall survival over radiation therapy up through 2016. However, it was just expected that patients treated with radiotherapy tended to be older and have higher levels of comor comorbidities. IMRT for prostate cancer also started around 2000, since then, several advances in radiation have been implemented, including SABR, IGRT, combination therapies, and the space OAR gel, just to name a few. Interstitial brachytherapy plus external beam radiation therapy became the first modality to consistently show similar prostate cancer-specific survival for most risk categories around 2004. In October of 2016, the PROTEC study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine along with a second article describing the side effects and the quality of life differences. It included mostly low-risk patients, but did include some intermediate-risk patients. The radiation in this trial is no longer used and consisted of 74 gray and 37 fractions using a 3D conformal technique. An update was published in 2019 in European Urology and reported more cancer-related deaths and metastasis in the active monitoring group. 50% of men on active surveillance programs in, acad in academic centers or in clinical trials decide to get treatment by 10 years. However, in the community, only 15% of men continue NCCN recommended guidelines after uh, just two years. This slide details the cancer control rates. This is the companion article evaluating the patient reported outcomes. This slide reports more urinary incontinence with surgery and slightly more urinary bother symptoms with radiation therapy. This slide shows surgery has more erectile dysfunction compared to radiation therapy, but the mental health, anxiety, and depression scores are similar between all three arms of the trial. 
Another interesting way to compare treatments is to ask how many patients can obtain a trifecta or quadrilla. A trifecta for surgery is a patient with PSA control, urinary control, and good erectile function. A quadrilla for radiation is a patient with PSA control, good erectile function, good urinary bother scores, and no rectal toxicity. The trifecta after a radical prostatectomy based on the LAPRO trial with over 4,000 patients is only 38% after a year in men with preoperative, very low risk prostate cancer with no change by the second year. A quadrilla with prostate brachytherapy is 47% at year one and goes up to 61% by year three. The estimated quadrilla after CyberKnife is between 60 and 85%. To summarize, an active surveillance protocol is still considered the primary recommendation in most men. However, over time, only 15 to 50% of men stick with this program. CyberKnife and brachytherapy have better cancer control rates than surgery at 10 years. Radiation has more urinary bother scores than surgery, but only has a 1% risk of incontinence. There should be a lot less rectal toxicity with better image guidance and with the space OAR gel. There is less erectile dysfunction with radiation. The rates of metastasis, the number of people dying from prostate cancer, and the overall survival between all of the treatment options are the same. So consider the cancer control rates, the type and severity of the side effects, the retreatment rates, and the overall cost when deciding which treatment, if any, is right for you. Any questions or comments are appreciated. Thank you.